I'd like to thank you for your interest in the Fairhope Single Tax Corporation and hope that this film answers a lot of questions that you have about the Single Tax Corporation. It may also bring up some questions for you. If so, and if you have an interest to be a member of the Single Tax Corporation, we have a 12-week in-depth study that you can take, and at the end of the study, you can apply for membership. Thank you so much. The Fairhope Single Tax Corporation in the city of Fairhope is actually an idea that was spawned uh, some years ago in, uh, in Iowa, in Des Moines, Iowa, where there was a, a handful of, of reformers who were looking for something different, something better. And they followed a man named Henry George, an economist who came up with an idea that uh, for social reform that would help with poverty and infrastructure and how to get municipalities and people to work and live together. And they came up with some money and they decided that they would buy some land and set out to create a community. They wound up on the eastern shore of Mobile Bay after a couple of years of looking where they purchased land in about 1894. That was the beginning of what we know as Fairhope today. A group of very um, creative and uh, um, idealistic people um, came to Fairhope in 1894 to start a utopian community. And at that time in the United States, there were similar utopian communities being started in various ways, some socialist, some not. But at any rate, they came uh, inspired by the thought of Henry George, specifically in a book called Progress and Poverty, which uh, advocated uh, a more just distribution of uh, the um, wherewithal of the United States. So one has to remember that there was no social security at that time, there were no uh, unions, there was not much health insurance, there was not a minimum wage uh, situation, and so there was desperate poverty. And so Henry George's book was called Progress and Poverty. If there is more and more progress, one would think that would make for less and less poverty but the opposite was happening in the United States. So this idealistic group of people came to Fairhope to start a, an idealistic utopian community. And uh, with Fairhope, uh, there were some fascinating people who were very insightful people. One, E.B. Gaston, who's one of the major founders, uh, who wrote uh, an essay called um, Cooperative Individualism which really emphasized what is now the Republican Party ideology of personal responsibility and yet an emphasis on what the Democratic Party might call a cooperative support where a hand up is not a handout and there is a recognition of that people have a real shot at uh, being able to make a success of their lives and that's especially true in this case if they have uh, a fair and equal access to land. And if they have access to the land, and it's only the land that is taxed, and not their improvements, it's what has eventually come to be called incentive taxation. Namely, it's a real incentive to improve things as best you can, and what your improvements are won't get taxed. Uh, and there'll be a fair distribution of tax obligations because you tax the land. Uh, the single tax system has been modified due to the needs with laws and through time and space, but it is now uh, it still exists and it, it fits uh, for a 21st century man. The main thing to remember about the founding of Fairhope, it was based on faith and sacrifice. The people who decided up in Des Moines, Iowa to form the Fairhope Single Tax Club based on Henry George's idea thought that they were going to be able to build a better world. And as our Constitution says, create a model community free from monopoly and other special interests. These people were largely middle class. They knew the system in place in the 1870s on up through the 1890s was going in the wrong direction. And they felt that Henry George had the idea. And so they uh, decided to sell, in many instances, everything they had come down here and start anew. And so the first purchase that they made when they came here was the 132 acre track that now constitutes a large part of our beautiful Bayfront parkland. 
Now they could have divided that up amongst themselves. As I said, they weren't wealthy, but they decided to hold that in trust for everyone because their economic theory said that if you leave that parkland, it'll become everyone's property if everyone has access to it. Now this is way ahead of its time. The goal was cooperative individualism, which E.B. Gadsden wrote a paper on, um, where a community works together as individuals. The land belongs, and this was Henry George's idea, the land belongs to everyone. And each individual was responsible for their own goods or, and, and, their, and brought value to the community for what they did. Their individualism was encouraged and those, those uh, early people each picked what was their best uh, job that they could do for this community. But many great things were done in those early years. These wide streets that we have in Fairhope, all the parks that we have across the Bay area, all of that is set aside in perpetuity. Strong people in this community have continued for 122 years to keep it going. Uh, the founders' dream was to uh, make a life so the individuals could just live a better life, so that the economic system would not be a burden to them, and that the political system would not be a burden to them. Uh, they, they, they had the individual in mind. The early single taxers felt that you should not penalize a person for their capital or their labor. These are things that they earned and they should be able to keep. The one thing that you should tax is the value that the community creates by building. In other words, if you build a large house, if you build a small house, if you build a medium-sized house, you are creating value that you should be allowed to keep and sell for whatever you want to. But the land underneath it, as you build all of these things, the value will rise underneath the land. So what happens if you have four lots and three people build houses out of the four, and then when you build the houses, you have a road that comes through and you have services that come in. The fourth person, if they do nothing with their land, Traditionally, what happened is that person would pay very little taxes and you'd transfer the value to the people who have used their capital and their labor to build houses and create something. But you're giving the, the largesse to the person who's done nothing by keeping their taxes low. But the reason his land price is rising is because of what the labor of his neighbors is. So in single tax, all their rents would be the same. All of their taxes would be the same on their land. As it rose in value, their taxes would go up. And the person who didn't put anything on it, their taxes would go up too. So they would be incentivized to either build or get rid of it and let somebody else come in and do something with it. This has come down to us today as LVT, or Land Value Taxation. One of the things that comes up for me when I think about the legacy of if I get in, the, get in the car and go to a ball game at the university, I have to go through Demopolis, Grove Hill, Little Towns, Citronelle, on the way there. And it, it always catches me, you know, when I come back to Fairhope, I think, goodness gracious, look at Fairhope, Alabama. Look at these, look at all the things we have. Look at the parks and museums and the schools and the hospital and the library. So the legacy of the Fairhope Single Task Corporation, I see that in years to come is going to continue to grow and prosper and support this community and make this be the kind of place that we all want to live. The legacy they're giving us here in Fairhope is providing things that we otherwise wouldn't be able to afford. Well, we owe single tax a lot because actually Fairhope is Fairhope because of the single tax. I think now, you know, we are still trying to build a, a utopian community. Um, what the founders did. And with that, there's a .002 demonstration fee that is charged on the land value of uh, every parcel that we lease. Uh, that now adds up to about $750,000 a year. And that money, 100% of, goes back into our community. Uh, we've recently given a million dollars of those demonstration fees to Thomas Hospital. 
to uh, help build a neonatal uh, birthing center. We, have, we are currently building a parking lot uh, next door to the library to help our downtown merchants, the entire downtown is single tax land. And uh, we're going to spend over $300,000 on this parking lot. We just put $300,000 toward the concession stand slash bathroom facility at the soccer field. We built numerous sidewalks around Fairhope. We've really done everything we can to, to help make this community a special place. The legacy is to cooperative individualism to make this community the best community that could be for everyone that is here. Uh, to share our wealth among each other. The very fact that the parklands are still there, the very fact that we still have approximately 4,500 acres of leased land, 3,000 lessees, because we have maintained the ownership of our land, we have charged just an incremental amount over and above what the county charges for land tax. That slight increment has helped us build buildings, has helped us improve sidewalks, has helped us uh, protect our wetlands, has helped us add so much to Fairhope's well-being, as well as defending it. And that's an important thing to remember as we move on tomorrow. It's always been something of an inspiration to me to try to make sure we're protecting and defending what we have. I think the le legacy of the Fairhope Single Tax after 122 years, if you look at what is here now, um, you would see a community that uh, really is in so many ways a utopian community. When you look at all of the parks, how they're integrated, you look at the beachfront land that we have with the pier. I mean, the Single Tax Corporation has given the utilities to the city of Fairhope, um, given the downtown streets to the city of Fairhope. And if you really look at, at Fairhope and see what makes Fairhope special compared to other even Bayfront communities, most of what makes Fairhope special came from the Single Tax Corporation. All of the parks, the Bayfront land, the pier, the utilities that finance so much of the city of Fairhope, you look downtown, the trees in the downtown, the sidewalk projects. Uh, Fairhope is just a, a city that's unique from any others. Um, and I think a lot of people, when they look at Fairhope and the uniqueness of Fairhope, they do see the parks, they see the trees, they see the sidewalks. Uh, but really, probably the legacy, even more so than that, um, that came from Single Tax are the people that are here. The Single Tax Corporation brought so many people from all over the world to Fairhope that Fairhope was not a stagnant, you know, backwater Alabama town. Fairhope had ideas coming from everywhere. If you look back at the legacy of people like um, Marietta Johnson, who started the organic school and was world renowned, um, just the artists that we had, people like Anna Braun, you look at the writers that have come from this area, so much of that was due to that just melting pot of people from all over the country and in fact all over the world coming here, many of them because of the single tax corporation, those single tax corporation philosophies. A recognition that the corporation is a, a massive uh, contribution to the town. I see nothing but um, continued uh, creative uh, developments. I think the future of the single tax corporation of Fairhope is, is basically for the Fairhope Single Tax Corporation uh, to move forward, continuing to do uh, projects for the city uh, that will benefit the lessees and to continue trying to make this community a utopian community. We don't know what hard economic times may be coming, but we'll always have the single tax there as our backup. Single tax will help Fairhope move into the future. Fairhope Single Tax archives are now available online. You can easily access this collection for your own research at fairhopesingletax.pastperfectonline.com. For more information about the Fairhope Single Tax Corporation, you can visit us or write to us at 336 Fairhope Avenue, Fairhope, Alabama, 36532, or feel free to call us at 251-928-8162. And there's a wealth of information at fairhopesingletax.com.